Hi, Internet. It's your boy Chandler, a.k.a. the True Dark Magician. Back again for another exciting installment of Sitting Across From Me Is. And today, I have got, I've got a special treat for you. I've got author, illustrator, Lego enthusiast, Sean Wong, here to talk about here to talk about his original comic, Runner, and uh, the stuff he did on Tick and Arthur. So without further ado, Mr. Sean Wong. Thank you for being here today. Nice to meet you. We're talking with you. Okay. Alright, let's get right into it. First question. How did you make the leap from uh, architecture to comics? What were some of, uh, what were some of uh, the key factors that decided that? Uh, basically, I went to uh, MIT for uh, undergrad architecture, uh, and around my junior year, just kind of realized I had zero passion for drawing buildings and had a lot more passion for drawing comics. Um, so I, at that point, I just kind of made the switch uh, and decided to uh, try to pursue a career in comics. Was it taken Arthur the first title you worked on, or were there others before that? Um, actually, uh, I started with Rutgers. Um, it was a sort of thing, I was, because I was uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, I knew of the local company, New England Comics, which does the tip. Uh, and I kind of developed uh, my Runner series already, which, by the way, is a fun sci-fi action comic about alien smuggling. So ba the basic concept is if you have the smuggling adventure from Han Solo, but if the entire crew were cantina aliens. Um, so basically, it's like a fun, light action adventure that kind of built into a bigger story. But I've written the whole first story and I approached uh, New England Comics to see if they wanted to publish it. And at the time, they weren't looking for new stuff, but they were looking to start up a tent of comics again. So they actually asked, they liked my writing and they liked my art, so they asked if I wanted to work on that. So that's how that ended up being my first professional work in comics. <laughs> All right, so uh, Ben in, uh, Edward, uh, creator of the tick, created the tick as a mascot for New England Comics, which while well, he was still in high school. What was it uh, like having the like having the torch passed to you to get to continue uh, working on working on uh, his his um, his project? Uh, it was awesome, as you would probably imagine, a very fun world to work in. Uh, those that original Edlin run is, still holds up as a great read, shock full of really fun characters, wacky universe that he had created. So it was just a lot of fun to kind of uh, take the torch and run with it. Um, I kind of created a couple uh, new characters that have since become, I think, uh, fan favorites and one that they still kind of include in the series today. So that's kind of rewarding. But uh, yeah, it was a whole lot of fun. All right. Um, and this is the last question about the tick, I swear. What, um, do you see the tick as a parody or as its own thing in its own little bubble? That's interesting. I, um, and I don't mind the tick questions, by the way, because, like I said, it's a, it was a lot of fun to work on. And every now and then I'll reread the, the stuff I wrote, and I still think it was a, it's a, a really fun read. Um, so I love talking about the tick. Uh, wait, so what was your question? Oh, a parody. Do you see it as a parody, or does, do you think it exists in its own little bubble? I think it definitely exists in its own bubble. Um, it's interesting, because I always found the tick to be a little harder to write for, um, but I found Arthur to be a more grounded character. So, um, so for me, it wasn't straight up parody, because it wasn't just that. But I think through Arthur, I could get like some human moments out of it. Um, so it's definitely its own thing. Yeah, the straight man is always an important component when you're doing a comedy. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about Runner. Uh, what's it about and why did you create it? Uh, it is a fun sci-fi action comedy about alien smugglers. Um, basically, I have two books out right now. Uh, you can read it for free at runnersuniverse.com. And actually, on that site, uh, for every page, I have a bit of uh, director commentary. So different notes on what we do as a writing, design process, that sort of thing. So uh, Comic Creators is actually a good place to check out the series. And I have it on Webtoon Canvas as well. Uh, basically the reason I did it was because, and it's really hard to believe at this point, but in I think the early to mid 90s, uh, sci-fi was pretty much dead. Like that was before the Star Wars prequels even. So Star Wars was dead as well. And for me, having grown up on Star Wars, I just really wanted a really fun 
sci-fi opera, space opera, to read, and there wasn't really anything like that, so I decided to just create my own. Okay, so what goes into self-publishing your own time? Ah, uh, definitely a lot of hard work. Uh, for me, it's especially time-consuming because I'm doing everything on it, which includes plotting, writing, uh, pencils, inks, colors, lettering. Um, and with a sci-fi world, it's especially a lot of work uh, designing the world. Ships, uh, the world, the cultures, costumes, all of that. But um, definitely since I started working on it in the early 2000s, I guess, I think self publishing has come a long way as far as things like Patreon, Kickstarter. Um, so it's definitely, a good, and web comics in general, being able to just put it up online for people to be able to read it. Um, so it's definitely come a long way. Uh, and what are some of your plans for the future? Anything you're working on right now? Uh, it's pretty much runner. Uh, I have done two school books already. I am very close to finishing the third book, which is actually 50% longer than each of the two previous books. It's about the equivalent of a graphic novel and a half, which is why it's been taking a bit longer. Um, but that should be wrapping up towards the end of this year, and I'll probably do a pitch starter for that next year. So if anyone... Yeah, I, I have a lot of people coming up. When's book three coming up? When's book three coming up? Which is great. I'm glad, you know, people have loved the series enough that they're eagerly waiting for the next chapter. Um, but before I even tackle book three, I decided I really needed to know where the whole series was going. So I spent basically a good chunk of a year plotting out the entire series, which is going to be 10 books total. So I have that all broken down by each of the books. Um, so I have pretty much all the big twists and turns plotted out, all the character parts, so it's not like me. making things up as I go along, which I was for a little bit for the first two books. But I have it pretty much all plotted out. Book three is coming out very soon, uh, and just eager after that to jump into uh, book four, five, six, seven through ten. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> Well, that's about all I've got for you today. Um, I'm going to have links in the description below to all of Sean's um, websites and social media. You can check them out where? At uh, runnersuniverse.com. And that'll do, it for, that'll do it for this installment of Sitting Across From Me Is. Thank you for joining me, Internet. Thank you for joining me, Sean. Until next time, be good to yourselves and one another. Bye! <laughs>